Hello! This video is all about my most anticipated book haul. I just got the final part of my thrift books order. I have it all right there. And since I am an actual heathen, I received three of the books yesterday. But I wanted to open the other ones on camera. So I guess that we'll just go ahead and I want to show you the ones that I've already opened first. I, I want to save the unboxing ones for last. So the first book that we have is called The Snow Child by an author's name that I am not even going to attempt to butcher. But the last name is Ivy. Alaska. 1920. A brutal place to homestead, and especially tough for recent arrivals Jack and Mabel. Childless, they are drifting apart. He's struggling to maintain the farm, she crumbling from loneliness and despair. In a moment of levity during the season's first snowfall, they build a child out of snow. The next morning the snow child is gone, but they glimpse a young girl running through the trees. This little girl, who calls herself Fena, seems to be a child of the woods. She hunts with a red fox at her side and somehow survives alone in the Alaskan wilderness. As Jack and Mabel come to understand this child, who could have stepped from the pages of a fairy tale, they begin to love her as their own daughter. But in this beautiful, violent territory, things are rarely as they appear. And what they eventually learn about Fena will transform them all. So that is my copy of The Snow Child. And now I wanna show you Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore by the author Robin Sloan. The Great Recession has scuffled Clay Jannon out of his life as a San Francisco web drone and serendipity, sheer curiosity, and the ability to climb a ladder like a monkey have landed him a new gig working the night shift at Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. But after a few days, Clay begins to realize that this bookstore is even more curious than the name suggests. There are only a few customers, but they come in repeatedly and never seem to actually buy anything. Instead, they check out and possibly obscure volumes from the strange corners of the store, all according to some elaborate, long-standing arrangement. The bookstore must be a front for something larger. Clay has embarked on a complex analysis of the customer's behavior and ropes his friends into helping him figure out just what is going on. And when they bring their findings to Mr. Penumbra, it turns out the secrets extend far outside the walls of the bookstore. What the main factor in me picking this was, whenever I was in college, I went for creative writing and one of my professors gave us writing prompts about, well, one of the options to choose from was exactly like this, but it was about a supermarket that has nothing on the shelves. And yet whenever a customer comes in to ask for something, the employee will go to the back, to the warehouse, I'm assuming, and pull out whatever that person asks for. And then we had to write a story about that, make a whole resolution, what was the whole secret about. So that really swayed my decision to get that one. It was on thrift books, of course, scrolling, and I saw similar books to the miniaturists, and I thought, well, count me in. This book is called The Muse by Jesse Burton. A picture hides a thousand words. On a hot July day in 1967, Odell Bastian climbs the stone steps of the Skelton Gallery in London, knowing that her life is about to change forever. Having struggled to find her place in the city since she arrived from Trinidad five years ago, she has been offered a job as a typist under the tutelage of the glamorous and enigmatic Marjorie Quick. But though Quick takes Odell into her confidence and unlocks a potential she didn't know she had, she remains a mystery no more so than when a lost masterpiece with a secret history is delivered to the gallery. The truth about the painting lies in 1936 in a large house in rural Spain, where Olive Schloss, the daughter of a renowned art dealer, is harboring ambitions of her own. Into this fragile paradise come artist and revolutionary Isaac Robles and his half-sister Teresa, who immediately insinuate themselves into the Schloss family, with explosive and devastating consequences. Okay, to be honest, that was a lot to take in. A lot of people were read all at once. However, I do think I am understanding exactly what I'm supposed to. And I'm just now noticing, oh my god. Whenever you look at the book a certain way, if you tilt the book down like this, it makes it look like 3D glasses almost. It says that this copy is signed by the author. And I've been giving my best Pawn Star act to try to figure out if it's real, but... I mean, if it is, it is. If it isn't, it isn't. I don't know. I'm guessing it's real if it has a sticker on the front. And guess what, guys? It comes with a bookmark. It comes with a ribbon bookmark. 
You can't tell me that this book doesn't look outrageously, like, just intriguing. Look at those red pages. I am very excited. So, I guess let's just... Oh my gosh. Let's open this thing up. <gasps> I thought I cut the book for a second. What? What? I got this copy for $5.99 on Thrift Books, and here at Majors and Quinn. It was $175. But this is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And it says here, the circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there, when yesterday it was not. Within the black and white striped canvas tents is an utterly unique experience full of breathtaking amazements. It is called Le Cirque de Reves. If I butchered that, please let me know. And it is only open at night. But behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway. A duel between two young magicians, Celia and Marco, who have been trained since childhood expressly for this purpose by their mercurial instructors. Unbeknownst to them, this is a game in which only one can be left standing. Amidst the high stakes, Celia and Marco soon tumble headfirst into love, setting off a domino effect of dangerous consequences and leaving the lives of everyone from the performers to the patrons hanging in the balance. I'm here for it. Like I said, I'm trying to get way more into fantasy books. This certainly gives me like a Moulin Rouge vibe. Okay, we're pulling out of the bag next. This one was super interesting to me. This next book is called The Storied Life of A.J. Thickery by Gabrielle Zevin. This was kind of out of the box for me. I have pretty much no idea what it's about. A.J. Thickery's life is not at all what he expected it to be. He lives alone, his bookstore is experiencing the worst sales in his history, and now his prized possession, a rare collection of Poe poems, has been stolen. But when a mysterious package appears at the bookstore, its unexpected arrival gives Fikri the chance to make his life over and see everything anew. Sometimes I just need a break from reading horror because sometimes I want to read happy stuff too. And that's all I can say about that. I know exactly which one this last one is and I think that... Oh, well, first of all, the name got me. The name is what really stuck out to me, and then I saw the cover, and I was like, okay, well, let's give it a try, because why not? Let me marvel at it first. I love this. Last and final book is called Of Bees and Mist by Eric Sichuan. Sichuan? I think that's how you say it. Raised in a sepulchral house where ghosts dwell in mirrors, Meridia grows up lonely and miserable. But at age 16, she has a chance at happiness when she falls in love with Daniel, a caring and naive young man. Soon they marry, and Meridia can finally escape to live with her husband's family, unaware that they harbor dark secrets of their own. There is a grave hidden in the garden. There are two sisters groomed from birth to despise each other, and there is Ava, the formidable matriarch and the wickedest mother-in-law imaginable, whose grievances swarm the air in an army of bees. As Meridia struggles to keep her life and marriage together, she discovers long-buried secrets about her own past as well as shocking truths about her new family that inexorably push her love, courage, and sanity to the brink. I mean, I don't know about you, but that is like really ringing my bell right there. There you have it. There are all six books. Thank you for everybody that's come and subscribed to my channel. And also thank you to everybody that's been hopping over to my website and reading my stories. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.